Today I'm going to show you my personal recommended blender settings to help you speed up your modeling. Okay, so first, I don't really have much need for both a layout and modeling tab. So I'm going to delete the modeling tab and maybe rename layout to layout slash modeling. Next, I'm going to edit preferences. I'm going to go to the interface. I'm going to set the resolution scale to 1.2 because having a little bit bigger will be good for tutorials and maybe a little bit better on the eyes. Also going to set large cursors for the same reason. Next, I'm going to go to add-ons and choose some ones that I find useful. So some of the useful add-ons include the add ones, which can add extra objects, ivy, trees, curves, landscape, architectural stuff, more architectural stuff, bolts, extra objects, geodesic domes. I might add sampling tree, ivy gen, for example. Maybe also extra objects. 3D print toolbox might be useful if you do 3D printing. So maybe I'll enable that. F2 adds some advanced fill functionality for making edges and faces. Loop tools allow you to modify your loops easily, such as changing them into a circle or flattening them out. Might use relax too sometimes. Node Wrangler is quite helpful. It makes the nodes in like the shader editor and compositor easier to work with. Bull tool helps because it can give you some advanced bull functionality, make it quicker. Rigify gives you some defaults for human rigs for animation. Magic UV helps a little bit with UV editing. Oh, and scatter objects is not a bad idea too. Next in input, we have some settings to emulate, which are good for laptops, which often don't have a numpad or a three button mouse. So for example, you use the numpad to go between here, pressing one, two, three, and seven on the numpad. But you could do that with emulate numpad by pressing one, two, three on the top of your regular letter keys. However, in 2.8, they added this functionality with the tilde key, which is in the top left under escape on most keyboards, which allows you to use the pie menu to go to the different ones. Not to mention, they also made this interactable. So emulate numpad isn't quite as necessary anymore. Uh, but there's also emulate three button mouse, which will allow you to use the middle mouse button with alt left click. For navigation, we got orbit around selection, which will orbit around your selection when you rotate around 3D view, which is fairly useful. But I personally prefer to use lock to 3D cursor, which you can find with pressing N. And there should be lock to 3D cursor under view lock which basically, if I move my 3D cursor over here, for example, it'll rotate around this 3D cursor. So I'm just gonna go and set lock to 3D cursor in all of my tabs. All right, so that's all set up now. Next up, we got the key map. Now I'm going to turn on select all toggles because that's the old functionality for selecting all and unselecting all. So basically with this, if you got anything selected, it will deselect. So when you press A, it will deselect. And if you have nothing selected, it will select everything. And this is the old way to work. Also, you might want to use right click select because with right click select, I can select something with right click and I can have a gizmo out. And if I had like something real close here and I selected this guy, I can just right click to select that guy and the gizmo here won't get in the way, which it often does with left click select. I think I'm going to stick to left click select just because it's the default and I'm making tutorial videos. So 
I don't want to get too far from the default settings, but you might want right click select instead. There's also some extra options for your Pi menus, such as the extra shading options for Pi menus. So if I go like here, I only have these four settings when I press C, but if I add extra, I got some extra settings here like toggle overlays and toggle x-ray. Next, I'm gonna go system. I'm gonna go set my CUDA device to my GTX 1060 instead of none so that I can use uh, my GPU to help render in cycles. I believe OpenCL is for your AMD graphics cards. I'm gonna raise my undo steps from 32 to 64. You can bring it all the way up to 256. I think 64 will be okay for me since I often need a little bit more than the 32, but I don't usually find that I'm like way far off what I undo. So I think 64 will probably be a good number so that I don't have to have a lot of memory usage. I'm gonna go to save and load. I'm gonna turn up my recent files to 20. So if I hit control shift O, I have recent files. So I think having more than 10 is good because I often work on games and have like a lot of different models for my game. So having more recent files shown will be helpful. You also got save versions, which is how many old saves it keeps. So when you save, it will automatically create a blend one, a blend two, a blend three file from your old ones. You also got auto save temporary files in the timer. So basically, if you forget to save, this will have a temporary save in your temporary folder, and I'll save every two minutes by default. And I'm gonna leave that to that. Sounds good to me. There's also file paths, so you can set some default paths, as well as applications such as an image editor. Anyway, I'm gonna go and save these preferences. Next up, rather than just the regular preferences, I'm gonna go and change some of the settings in this file itself, and then I can go and save it as the startup file, which is the default file that you get when you start up the program. Okay, so first, under shading, for my solid shading, I'm gonna have it set to matcap, and I like this one. Now, the main reason why I have it set to matcap is because if I go into here and I have a normal flipped, it tends to be more noticeable if it's flipped than if it was in the other ones, such as Studio, where it's not actually noticeable. Now, another option is I could go to Overlay and I could go to Face Orientation and it'll tell me that, hey, this guy is flipped here. It's red. So I can go and hit Shift N and I'll recalculate that. So, but I don't really like having it all blue and red. So I'm going to change that to off and I'm going to go to matte cap because that makes it more obvious if I accidentally get my normals flipped. The other option is back fa face culling, which basically says that the back side of your faces is turned to invisible. I will also change it to random color so that every object I have is a random color. I will also turn on cavity, which kind of like marks up the edges a little bit more, which can make details a little bit more noticeable. Also, I'm going to change this so that it's, by right clicking, I'm going to change it to Shade Smooth. And then I'm going to go to this triangle tab here, open up Normals, and hit Auto Smooth. This automatically smooths it based off an angle, so if it's an angle like this 90 degree one, it will be turned to flat. But if it's a small angle, like a 1 degree angle or a 2 degree angle, it'll be changed to smooth. And you can set which angle it determines here. But most of my objects I set to smooth and auto smooth, so this might save me a little bit of time occasionally. Now I might go to texture paint, and I'm going to go and set some default settings here in project paint. I might want more bleed. Let's say 6 pixels of bleed. And I'm going to go and t change my unified brush to color too. Maybe also strength. Basically, you'll have a different color or strength with each of these brushes if they're turned off which I find annoying because I'll often change my color and then switch it to a different tool. And then I'll, my brain will automatically assume it's the same color, but then it ends up not being and I have to undo and 
I also think I might add a shader node panel down here that I'll keep small most of the time. Because sometimes I like to work with the shader nodes while texture painting. So I'm going to right click on this little edge between these two different panels. That's going to have the option to split area. I'm going to press split area and then I can choose where I want to split it. I'm going to select here and then I'm going to go select this little guy which determines what type of panel this is. So I'm going to go and choose shader editor. So now I got a little shader editor. Most of the time I can just work with this. If I need more of this, I can bring it up and have it bigger. I'm going to change my snap setting to vertex by default. I find that that's the one I use the most often. I'm going to set my tool to move by default on both my objects mode and my edit mode. And I'm going to deselect this because I had that selected before. And next up, I'm going to go and set some quick favorites that I want. So first off for object, I'm going to have my auto smooth added to quick favorites. So if I hit Q, I have auto smooth there. Sadly, this angle here, I can't add it to my quick favorites. I will also go to file, export FBX and add that to my quick favorites. It's not a bad idea in the file guide to go and set some bookmarks such as add bookmark so that I can get to different folders easily. Edit mode, tabbing. Uh, first off, I'm going to want to hit control V to bring up my vertex menu. And I'm going to have remove double vertices added to my quick favorites. I'm going to go to mesh normals. I'm going to choose a few of these normal tools to have in my quick favorites. I'm going to have, say, set from faces, add to quick favorites. I'm going to have um, rotate, add that, and point normals to target, maybe average normals. I haven't really used the other ones of these too much, so I think I'll be good for now. I might hit control E and add bridge edge loops to quick favorites. And those are going to be my quick favorites. So next I can go back to object mode and I'm going to go hit file and I'm going to do save startup file. I might save this out somewhere else too, just in case. Anyway, a question for you guys is what are some of your favorite settings? What are some of your favorite add-ons, especially those that might not come by default? And if you guys like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help me grow. Thank you.